Uh, hi, everyone again. Uh, I'm Artem Jidan, and for today's uh, meeting for the .NET community, I'm going to present you the um, unit test for ACA.NET via ACA test kit. So um, let's start from agenda. So for today at the beginning, we will actually look through uh, what uh, is the ACA.NET library, just to give some context for those who don't actually work with <clears throat> this framework. Uh, after that, we will talk in in scope of that, we will talk about the actor system, about the actual actors. And after that, we will dive into the ACA test kit. We will talk um, about its like general um, flow of the test. We will look into the basic test structure. And uh, after that, we will look on some uh, uh, building asserts and instruments, which uh, most of them we will also cover into small demos that I've prepared for uh, uh, like this meeting. So let's actually start from uh, the question, what is ACA.NET? So the ACA.NET is actually the library that was provided to us by Peter Bridge for um, building the um, um, actor system uh, for uh, uh, separating some uh, calculations, for example, processing some messages in um, Concurrent in the concurrency like model. Uh, the the idea of ACA is not new, and actually the name is also not new. It's uh, uh, it's also exists in Java from where it actually came to .NET, and uh, the idea in both frameworks is actually the same, just to build up the actor system to spread our calculations. So uh, regarding the actor system, here is the uh, like general. Um, diagram of the actor system so here is the underlying actors and here is the actors which we actually consuming uh, and creating where we uh, uh, wrote our code so uh, when we actually create a system for an actor system for our application it already uh, has like three main actors the root guardian the like main and uh, the parent uh, actor for all uh, actors uh, and on the next row, we have the user, uh, the user or the user guardian, and the system or the system guardian. Uh, the main idea why they are actually called guardians because in ACA we have um, uh, the functionality which is called the supervising of child of children. When the, some of the child doctors falls, it's actually uh, send the message to the parent, uh, and where we also can configure the. Um, uh, workflow, how we should handle, uh, well, it's it's fallen. So uh, the root guardian is actually uh, the main actor here, and uh, it's actually uh, working to keep uh, working with like um, all the actors we have in our system. So uh, for um, uh, the user or the user guardian, it's actually the uh, parent of all actors which we are creating by our code using the system dot actor of or the context dot actor of. Each actor uh, has its uh, unique path by which we actually can send him a message, um, which is the um, another way not only by the actor ref um, actor uh, um, actor ref. <clears throat> well, uh, in scope of my demo, I will uh, present some. Um, like this project with some actor system where we can actually look more closely to how the actors is actually uh, sending messages to each other. And let's uh, talk a little bit, a little bit more uh, regarding the actual actors uh, about the of its structure. So uh, as you can see here, the actor is consist of um, I believe four, yeah, four, uh, four main parts. So the first one is actually the mailbox. It's it is the query where um, uh, we stores all the messages that uh, came to actor and which are actually and in which order they will be processed. Uh, also, each actor has a state um, which with which uh, uh, it can actually works and operates as a unit. And also, each actor uh, has a behavior. So the behavior uh, uh, is uh, mostly the logic which we actually um, add to our actor. And uh, also, we can configure the message types uh, of which uh, this actor can handle, and also 
we can configure the behavior um, by which the actor can um, works with different messages. And also each actor, ha well, not actually each, it's, uh, uh, but the actor can have a children. Uh, we can actually create them uh, through the actor's context. And uh, also we can uh, configure, as I mentioned, the supervising strategy. Uh, just to handle some uh, um, like um, um, exception cases. Uh, need to mention that the uh, most uh, that uh, most actors are actually the um, like uh, the main logic unit in the like ACA. And uh, also, when the some exception runs into the one actor, it will not. Uh, affect uh, other because each actor are actually separate from um, another and uh, the only one who will knew that uh, in actor uh, go something wrong is actually its parent. So um, during my work with Akshawaka, it was uh, like, well, a very big number of two projects, uh, but where I like have tasks uh, where I uh, was working with uh, Arca directly. Uh, I uh, get a little bit concerned of uh, where was the actual unit test for it, and uh, also the like the most my uh, the, the the main question for me is how I can actually cover the actors' communications uh, via unit test without uh, having a really hard times, because you know that concurrency stuff. Because uh, one of the main um, uh, one of the main points of the actor system, not only in ACA, but in actor system as a concept, is that all the actors should uh, communicate with each other by uh, asynchronously uh, by messages. And uh, well, it's uh, have some thoughts in my head and I've started to interest in these questions. And the answer of it was pretty simple. Just use uh, ACA test kit. So the ACA test kit is actually the, um, library for creating unit tests for ACA.net, which is obvious. Um, it provides us a very like um, useful and very simple uh, and uh, very understandable instruments to handle the most uh, like needed cases for which we should cover by our unit tests. So the main uh, concept of the ACA test kit is that we actually can uh, separate the actors that we want to test and other uh, actors which, uh, with, uh, with which it is communicating, we can uh, substitute with some test actors. Uh, we are like the internal instruments of the ACA test kit. So if in normal operation, it will looks like we will have like two actors which send in a message one to another and to pine on them in uh, like our unit test, we will, ha we will have the next um, uh, picture where some uh, one of the actors uh, will be actually the test actor uh, by which we um, will also, um, uh, from which we will also uh, send the message to the actor which we want to test and by which we will also handle the uh, replies on our messages and verify them. So uh, just to understand uh, was the work for, was the work for correct or not. So let's look to the like basic tests. So um, I forgot to mention the ACA test kit is actually a very um, uh, <clears throat> has a very come uh, wide integrations with like three most um, uh, commonly used uh, uh, unit test frameworks for .NET. It's uh, I believe uh, here is the example with the N unit. In the demo, we'll be in, uh, we will work with X unit, and as far as I remember, it also have the integration with the MS test as well. So let's uh, look to the like basic te basic test here. So according to the ACA test kit documentation, this is how 80% uh, of your test uh, will look. So let's uh, look more closely to it. So first of all, um, we uh, need to um, inherit our like test class uh, from the um, test kit class, which is actually the class that provides by aka.testkit just to have um, an access to all functions for uh, building up our unit test for actors. 
<clears throat> and uh, this is approach is also will be used in our X unit demo. So after that, um, we uh, should create our actor under test by uh, using the actor test kit instrument. So here we are testing the user identity actor and we can create it um, by sys.act uh, act off. <clears throat> After that, uh, we should actually go and send um, to our actor a message. So in this case, the sender of this message will be actually our test itself. And uh, the reply of this message, uh, if it will be um, sent to us like sender.tell, uh, will be handled by uh, some inbuilt asserts. For example, the uh, assert which is expect message where we can directly um, tell which type of message we are actually waiting. And uh, with these methods, we can evaluate uh, was this right, like right message to handle or not? So let's go to and have a breath look on the building asserts in the test kit. Most of them are actually pretty, um, uh, pretty uh, obvious with its names. So uh, the main uh, here um, is actually the expect message, the expect no message, and expect message from. Um, so the expect message, message is actually just expecting the message of the appropriate type. The expect no message is that we will not receive any message uh, at all in the like, configured duration. Uh, so the expect no message is mostly used with uh, cases where we should um, the verify the timeout behavior and how it will be handled by our actor system and expect message from uh, it's actually the <clears throat> expecting the message of the appropriate type from the appropriate actor which we uh, put here by i actor ref like uh, by actor ref link so uh, we also have some like useful instruments, which uh, and all of them we will cover in demo uh, more closely. But for now, uh, it will be the web collector, repeat assertion, monitor actor termination, event filter, and test probe. And also um, at the end of the demo, we will talk a little bit uh, about um, strategies that uh, uh, the actual bridge uh, um, offers us to test in the parent child relations. So I believe that's it for like the main part of the presentation and let's dive into our demo. Let's actually begin from the program CS class as is like the root of it. So uh, for like this demo, I've created uh, um, some kind of demo project with the actor system, which uh, handles the procession of um, uh, data in uh, uh, in entities. So the data model here is that we have like two, I believe where are they? Yeah, two types of entity. First one is the root entity, which uh, is the like root object for the derived entities from it. So the um, uh, one basic example here is that the root entity is the department and the um, entity here is some like, um, um, I believe some um, operation unit or something like that. And uh, there are many operation units in one department and there is one department for like many operation units. So uh, for this, I've created the actor system which uh, consists of three main actors. So the first actor is actually the orchestrator, uh, which um, uh, actually creates the um, actors for each root entity uh, to process uh, entities data in, uh, in each of them. And we have also two um, entities actors, which actually works with entities. The first one is the entity processor actor. And the second one is the entity publisher actor. So uh, for, this kit, uh, for the orchestrator, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we get all the root entities uh, which we like have. 
Um, and for each of them, we are create a pair of uh, entity data publisher and entity data processor. And uh, after the creation was successful, we uh, send the message to the entity data processor. Uh, the message is start entities processing message to like start the process of um, procession. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for the entity data processor, we like um, have them. Um, we uh, configured the receivement of such messages. The first one is actually the start entities processing message, which actually uh, escalate the um, process of the entities procession. And for uh, and the other message is the publish result message, which actually sent to us the result of the procession. So here is just like uh, process the entities with the configured batch size. And after that, uh, go and ask the publisher actor to actually publish this data to like some external systems. So the scenario is the next. So for like um, entity data publisher, uh, entity data publisher actor, nothing uh, interesting here, just grab all the um, entities for entity keys from the message that we received, go and process them. And then uh, tell the sender, which is the entity processor that we finished up, please do and uh, proceed with the procession. So at the end, uh, when we uh, processed all the messages or there are some uh, uncertain situations with publishing, um, which, for example, it takes too long uh, for us to uh, process all the messages. So we send, um, I believe where it is, we send the message to our orchestrator, uh, which is the uh, end entities procession message. So uh, in scope of this message, the orchestrator will just go and uh, queue um, all the actors for the appropriate root entity by its root entity keys, just uh, telling them the poison people. So this is like the main scenario. I hope it uh, was not really complicated. Uh, and let's actually dive to our main um, to our main point here is the actual unit test. So. Um, uh, first of all, I just want to start from the basic assertion test. So here is nothing like uh, very, um, <clears throat> very hard here. Uh, we already uh, saw the example of such test in the presentation. So, um, and this is just a real example with a little bit context. So this is the test is actually uh, connected to the entity data processor, which should verify that if it has uh, left it, uh, any entities to publish or to process, it will send to us a message which will be the um, which will be the publish unbound messages. So here uh, in the arrange statement, we actually uh, first of all well create a mock uh, for the um, entity manager which uh, is the like business service uh, which process the entities. And after that, as you can see here, uh, with uh, the instruments that was provided by our uh, by the test kits to us, uh, we create the actual entity data processor actor and pass there uh, our mocks that we created and also a link to uh, the test actor, which um, actually represents our test. <clears throat> uh, so uh, for the entity data processor, uh, data processor actor, um, we actually have a um, reference for the publisher actor uh, to which uh, we will send uh, like the publish outbound message when we uh, actually ends up with the procession and um, just tell it to, hey man, please go and publish all the uh, processed entities to the external system. So in the act uh, statement, we just tell the entity data processor actor just to uh, start the, the procession process. And 
as the result, we are expecting that after it will uh, proceed with all entities, which we have here, which we have mocked, it's actually only one entity, uh, it will send to us a publish outbound message. So let's go to test explorer here. It's on the next screen. Let's get this test only. Give me a minute. That's right. Enter. So this is our test. We can run it and it actually works fine. So, uh, and that means that we get uh, all the, like we received the needed from uh, the needed message from the ended data processor. So the next test is actually <clears throat> related to a case where we don't expect any message. So for example, the idea here is the next. We started, uh, we created our entity data processor. We uh, tell it to start the procession, but uh, there is no entities to process. And in this case, for our uh, publish actor, we should not receive like any message because there is like no entities to publish because we didn't process anything. And in this scope, we can use expect no message, which will uh, verify that we will uh, that we didn't receive like any messages at all. So let's go to them. Test explorer. Pass this one. Get it and run. And this actually works fine. So uh, I believe that's all for the examples of like simple tests and let's dive in into some um, <clears throat> inbuilt instruments. So the first instrument is actually the bug hole actor. What is the bug hole actor? The bug hole actor is the um, uh, type of factors which provides to us by uh, test kit itself. And the main idea of its actor is that it uh, can receive a message, but uh, it will never respond to it. So it's like, like a black hole. You throw something in there and it's, um, and it's go away forever. Uh, this uh, type of factors is actually very useful when we should check the timeout um, behaviors. So for example, in our um, ent uh, entity data processor actor, uh, after we actually uh, finished with the procession, we uh, ask the publisher actor to publish all uh, the processed uh, entities in uh, some period of time. So the um, main idea of the uh, functions and this uh, main difference between the tell, the tell is actually the fire and forget. So you just tell the uh, like actors that, hey, uh, please proceed with this message and you didn't uh, wait any response from it. Uh, for us, the idea is a little bit different. We ask the actor to proceed with this message and we wait the response for it in a uh, configured um, period of time. And if uh, it will, and if something goes wrong, we have an opportunity to um, configure the behavior. Uh, and as the result, we will um, like uh, send an appropriate message to a um, uh, like configured actor. So for example, here we, uh, if, uh, anything went wrong and uh, we will not uh, receive any response from the publisher actor, we will create a publish um, a result message uh, with the successful FAH uh, false and um, send it well to our uh, data publisher actor. And so for verify this case, we actually can and um, uh, set the a publisher actor ref for uh, our processor to a black hole actor. So it uh, will never return to us like any, any message, any response. And in this case, in this case, um, our uh, entity data processor actor should uh, return to us, well, to uh, actually to its parent, which uh, we set up as uh, our test actor. Uh, it should return the 
and entities processing message because the timeout happens and uh, we have some um, exception situation here. So let's actually go to this test and try to run it. Enter, run. And it works fine. So uh, I believe this is it for, uh, for Black uh, Hole Actor. So uh, let's go to one of the most interesting cases here. Uh, to be honest, I spent really a really lot of time just to um, create a test case for using the repeat assertion. Um, uh, but well, here we have some of the examples. So what is the repeat assertion? The, main case of the repeat assertion is the um, await assert function. Uh, the main idea of it is that we uh, will um, call like the underlying uh, function, which is mostly the like uh, assertion action during uh, an configured period of time with an configured interval. So for example, here, uh when we actually tell our uh, after we tell our publisher actor uh that uh, it should like pr proceed with publishing outbound messages um we will call them like mock verification every i believe every um like 100 milliseconds during the 1000 milliseconds so for now, like uh, because in our uh, publishing actor there is no like a very uh, hard uh, business logic, it uh, should work. This test should work just fine. So let's just copy this one. Go here. Enter and run it. So as you can see, it will work just fine. Uh, but when we, uh, for example, set up here a thread sleep, which will be bigger than, I believe it was 1000, let's set it up like 1100, uh, sorry, um, which is like uh, bigger than our like main duration here, max duration here, click save, and let's just run it down. So the test will actually fall. Get some time to build. Yep, so this is actually fall because we uh, didn't uh, receive any response from it. And if we will set this up to, I believe, 100, which is uh, also in, the, in our range and run this test again. So we will actually have uh, the test works. So the main idea of the um, assertion is actually to test some cases where uh, uh, will be a potential delay. Um, and so I believe that's it for the um, uh, await assertion. So let's go to the, uh, the next instrument, which is uh, a monitor actor termination. So for particularly for this test case, I've created another actor, which is the uh, entity data process uh, monitor. Uh, the idea of this actor is to provide some monitoring stuff during the procession of the entities. So it's actually uh, creates in our entity data processor. Here, um, uh, we are creating it and on the st at the start, of the um, entities procession, we tell monitor to start like its activities. And at the end of um, uh, our, um, and, 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 done, and at the end of the entity data processor uh, life cycle, uh, we will tell uh, uh, monitor, uh, monitor actor just to end up with uh, its processes. And uh, we also assume that according to some like uh, rules that was provided to us, after the ending of the monitoring, the um, 
uh, and finishing all the stuff with the end monitoring, the monitor actor should, well, kill himself with the poison pill instance here. And uh, how we can verify it? that on the receive of the end entities process message, it will uh, terminate itself. Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, so uh, in the architect kit for uh, like these cases where we just want to verify the termination messages takes place for the particular actor, we can just watch it with the like watch function. So here I've created a monitor actor and after that added it to the um, uh, watch fun function. So we can monitor, uh, uh, is there like any termination message or not? After that, uh, I've just like tell it uh, to ends up uh, it's, uh, pro it's uh, pro <clears throat> uh, procession stuff. And uh, as in the third, we expect that the actor will terminate itself. So let's copy this test here. Let's go here and let's run this test. <clears throat> and it's actually passed. So we received the termination message for the monitor actor. So pretty straightforward and pretty simple. So let's go to the, the next one, which is the event filter. So uh, the main idea is the, um, of the event filter in the, the, in the unit test is that we can, um, by it, we can catch some uh, events that uh, are actually takes place in the actor. So the, um, <clears throat> the most common uh, events that we can handle is the login and the exception. So in this particular te test, I'm catching the new reference exception, which takes place in the like publisher actor. If the list of the entity keys is actually empty. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so for this test, we just created the publisher actor, just creating a message for it with like empty entity keys collection here. And after that, just um, like send, send this message to it and uh, add it to the event filter. And uh, we are expecting here one exception with the new uh, reference exception type. So let's actually copy this one, place here, and start here. And let's run. And it's actually passed. So uh, also pretty straightforward and uh, actually pretty uh, useful useful tool. So um, and the last uh, instrument that we are gonna observe here is actually the test probe. So the test probe uh, is actually like really powerful in scope of uh, testing uh, like uh, complex scenarios where uh, you should use uh, like two or more, three or more actors. So uh, for the this particular scenario, I've used like uh, the scenario where the uh, processor actor um, after uh, receive um, after processing some entities and received a message from the publisher that uh, everything published correctly um, uh, should end uh, should end its uh, the procession by sending the appropriate message to the orchestrator. Also here. Um, uh, we uh, can uh, can look into one of the main strategies of the testing of the parent uh, child uh, parent ch ch child behavior here. So as um, you remember, the orchestrator actor for each uh, root entity uh, creates uh, two children for it. One of them is the publisher and another of them is the processor. Here we mostly interested in um, our processor uh, man, yep. And um, and here we actually uh, we just by using the um, uh, test probe dot uh, child actor of function can simply 
create the processor as the child of the our test probe. It's like really very simple way to do so because the, uh, there are like three main uh, strategies that was provided to us by PetaBridge to unit test the uh, uh, parent ch child behaviors. So one of them is like using the test probe and another two is uh, either like um, pass to the children, the reference to its parents um, via like the um, uh, object through the constructor. Uh, we are director ref through the constructor, which kind of uh, over engineering for for me because for the child um, actor we have the API to uh, actually call our parent directly through the child context, and the other one is just to provide the predicate uh, instantiation of the child actor, uh, and this. Um, predicate we should pass to a parent constructor, which is also not a very um, common way to do so. Because, well, we already have everything in box and why should we like create something uh, over complicated like this one? So in this case, as, um, as for me, using the test probe is one of the simplest and uh, one of the most common ways to actually test this tested so for like this uh, particular scenario as i mentioned we create like two test probes two test probes one of them is our orchestrator and the another is the publisher which will represent the publisher actor so for our processor actor we create it as the child of the orchestrator <clears throat> of the orchestrator uh, probe using the child actor of and uh, passing there a refer uh, an actor reference to our uh, publisher test probe just using the ref property of it. After that, in the act, we uh, uh, tell our uh, processor to start uh, processing entities messages, uh, which we uh, actually grab uh, from mocks here, and. Uh, after that, um, according to our logic, it should ask the uh, publisher actor to publish them and awaits uh, a publish result message as the response. So here we're just telling the publisher to send a message to of the uh, publish result uh, of the publish results to a processor actor, and in the asserts we await that the processor actor will. Um, <clears throat> will send a message to uh, its uh, parent, which is the orchestrator, that it uh, ends up with entities procession. And we are awaiting this message from particularly this actor. So let's actually run it. I believe it's this one. And the test is passed. We get our message from our processor actor. So I believe that so for demo, let's return uh, to our presentation for a while. <clears throat> so uh, here is some like useful things that I've used. So first two is actually uh, contains the general information regarding the ACA.NET framework. And uh, last two is actually representing the articles uh, where uh, uh, where all the instruments that I've uh, presented to you actually described with some uh, use cases here. So I believe that's all from my presentation. Thanks everyone and uh, feel free to ask questions.